you're a small archery club. You want to get new people in. But you're looking for an affordable bow that you can have, something they can use for all different things. What's your options? Well, today, we're going to take a look at one. Hi there, I'm Gregory Richards, and this is 3D Archery. Hey everybody, welcome to 3D Archery. All right, you know, other channels have been doing videos about the cheapest bows, and I really liked them, and it got me wondering, you know, what is the cheapest bow? But I wanted to do a different angle. I don't want the cheapest bow that you can use. What about the cheapest bow for a club? So I wanted one that's ambidextrous, and I found one on eBay. It's sold by this person, Happy In, who, who has a 99.2% positive rating, but you have to look down, which I'll show you up next, in the little comments, they ask you the neutral or positive comments only, no negative. So take that 99.2 with a grain of salt. And yes, it's from China. Um, what I found from Eric, Hitman Archery, and some other people I know that work with the Chinese, is the Chinese, when you build a, an order with them, have them build an order. Let's say you want a thousand or something. They're going to make more than that. They sell you the thousand, then they take what's ever left over, the excess and the runoff. They sell them to different vendors and things like Alibaba and all that, and then they go out and resell them. So that's why you see a lot of Chinese knockoffs. And they also, if they find one company finds another successful, man, they knock it off left and right. All right. So that's how they do it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at it. The eBay listing and let's see what it's like and then I'll open this up and we'll see if it matches the description all right everybody here's the page from eBay and you can see the price is 35.88 with 4.99 in shipping for a total cost of forty dollars and eighty seven cents now if you look right here you'll see that the draw weight is 30 pounds that's what I selected so we'll see if I actually get that now they also offer it in 20, 30, and 40 pounds. If you scroll down the page, you come upon this. And here's a very, somewhat vague description of what it is. The takeaways here is it's a 57 inch bow, it's ambidextrous, and it has a 28 inch draw length. But then if you scroll down more, you get the actual description. Double arrow rest design, which is suitable for both left and right hand archers high strength nylon fiber handles and laminated glass fiber bows ensure sufficient strength and toughness while being durable and lightweight well in the words of uh the guy from 300 we'll have to see about that All right it's a takedown design easy to carry for outdoor travel one piece grip is comfortable to use non-slip and even beginners can hit the target steadily and accurately We'll put that one to the test also. Recommend it to anyone, new or experienced. So, big thing is the, the riser is nylon fiber. The limb material is laminated glass fiber. Comes with a Dacron string, very different than anything I've ever seen. Bow length 57 inch, string length 52, draw weights, DARW weights, 20, 30, 40 pounds. Brace height, look at this brace height, 9.4 inches. Holy Moses, right? And the bow weight is 750 grains, or grams, I should say. The package is gonna include one recurve bow riser, two bow limbs, one Dacron bow string, and one wrench. Now, if we go on to the next part down, I think this is funny, right? Um, once they get your payment, they'll ship it within 48 hours. Terms of sale does come with a 30-day money-back guarantee right now I like this look at about us and it says please don't leave us neutral or negative feedback before contacting us we will do our best to resolve your issue until your satisfaction and then I'll show you this here this is a picture of the guy they use demonstrating the bow now it's a pretty cool picture right one you can see shooting veins but just to be an idiot Look at the color vein on the arrow that he's using. 
then look at the color veins in his quiver. So he had a bunch of blue and white arrows, but he chose the orange arrow. Hmm. All right, everybody. So now you got it. Thirty-five eighty-eight plus four ninety-nine shipping. Total forty dollars and eighty-seven cents. Well, let's see what we got. Small box. The box is two feet by five inches wide and up two and three quarters inches deep. All right. So it's going to be small. They claim it's a, I think, a 57 inch hole, if I remember everything right. And yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay, that's it. No, no instructions, no nothing. Just say, thanks for your money. First impression, cheap. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, risers, it's a fiber they call it. Interesting, yeah. Um, grip don't feel bad. So it can't be cut to center because they got two on each side. And here's the line to center. So obviously this bow will have paradox on it. All right. Um, it was cast. There's two pieces. I can see the line here. Bring it in. Let's assemble it. Um, does it have a string? The riser is 16 inches and the limbs are 23 inches each. So, no shelf plates, no nothing. They did give me an Allen wrench, which now, I mean, every time you get a bow, I get an Allen wrench. So I got more of these dang things. You're probably still lose them all. Uh, I have to say, I think this bow was made by a company that's just looking to make something. Since the limbs are identical, I'm assuming there is no difference. So they slide in, they lock in into that so they don't move around. beauty contest and some of the traditional purists will probably have a connection if they see you shooting one of these but you know what I'm all about saving money and I'm not into that paying $350 for an, a, a riser or $1,200 for a bow you know I have a hard time I think the most I ever paid for a bow probably 200 bucks Somewhere around there. And then again, I don't buy new bows that often, so. All right. Assemble. Too bad in the hand. 
Um, the weight is right about here. I can really feel all this in my hand. All right, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to string it. This is supposed to be 30 pounds. I'm going to string it and let's check the weight. Everybody, here we are. That is a nine and a half inch brace height, which is recommended. First shot, let's see how this bow shoots. Not trying to hit anything. Let's see if I got to play with the brace height if it's got that hand shock from nine and a half. Being 20 pounds, easy to draw, hopefully. Yep. Lobs them out there. No talk, no shock, no nothing, no speed. Uh, let's see, I gotta put on a point. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it's a piece of junk, but it works. doesn't shoot bad at all. I mean, it's not shooting close to where I want, but hey. All right. So you heard the whang. harmonics go right through this um, nylon riser. 20 pounds. I really wish it was 30. I think the 30 would have been a little bit more fun to shoot. 20 is just lobbing them out there. But uh, no hand shock. So I guess the nine and a half is fine. All right, let's see how fast these things are slowly moving down range. One twenty three. I am getting hit on my riser. One twenty. <laughs> it's hitting me up here because the high brace height. Ugh. There we go. Not hurting, but it is hitting. One twenty five. One nineteen. All right, there you have it. I think we're pretty much done. Let's add them all up. And let's see what we get. Let's see. Remember, they got to go way off to the left. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know if that was me, the bow, or what. It was me. Hmm. 
just shoot a whole bunch. doesn't grow bad it's more my aiming than anything else I haven't found the exact spot but look first one I wasn't at full draw and that shows you the effect full draw the other four group like that so is it consistent I'd say yes but now they said it's durable hmm how can I test that hmm All right, everybody, first durability test. Um, these things should be pretty tough, but let's see how tough they are. All right, nothing hard. Pretty simple, right? Threw it up in the air and let it hit. Doesn't care how it hit. Try fired it. Um, no damage. So try one more arrow just to see. Fly beautiful. Actually, I think they fly better. You know, one thing I want to try real quick. Totally opposite. I'm gonna go to my long draw. right next to each other all right got one more test boys and girls don't try this at home because I'm a YouTube personality all right everybody the final test right durability now don't even think about doing this I'm doing this because I'm stupid and because I don't care all right remember don't do this at home why am I doing this because I'm a YouTube personality all right we're just gonna take my bow Let it land. Got to turn it this way for best success. Nothing personal. Don't worry. Not trying to cheat. And uh, I'll be right back. Is it durable? Yeah, I think you can say it is. All right, everybody, let's talk about the hits now that we're back. You know, I got a few of them. Look, I'm not going to just slam the bowl because it's cheap. It is cheap and it, it is what it is. But, you know, sometimes in life we have to take things on face value. Um, big hit, this grip, nice angle, fits in the hand perfect, it stops torquing. I love it. You know, there's something to be said about that grip. You know, compound bows use it. Rectangular shape fits right in the hand. So that's a big one. Um, the other one is it's ambidextrous. And that's great for what it's intended for. Uh, it's also a miss, which we'll talk about later. But, you know, being left-handed, I can't tell you how many times you go somewhere. Everybody gets to use one thing, but we got to use something different. And usually all the right-handed stuff's better than the left-handed stuff. So... Being able to give everybody the exact same bow, that's a big one for us lefties. Uh, the other one is, it's durable. <laughs> you 
Yep, I dry fired it at least 15, 20 times. I threw it up in the air. I even ran it over. Don't do that at home. That was just me being stupid. Um, you also have these big foam coverings here, you know, to protect the limb tips and things that can go wrong. It's durable, and that's great for beginners because you know they're going to trash it. You know they're going to dry fire it. Well, you don't have to worry because this bow, it can handle it. And the last one is pretty much a surprise to me was how smooth it is. Easy draw. Yes, I know it's only 20 pounds, but even 20 pounds, it never changed. There's no stack, no hand shock. I was really um, pleasantly surprised at that. So there's my basic kit. So I only got four of them. The grip, which I love, being ambidextrous, which is nice for training and teaching. It's durable and a surprisingly smooth shooter. So up next, let's look at the misses. All right, everybody, let's take a look at the misses on this bow. Um, the first one is, yeah, it's ugly. It's all straight lines, no smoothness, but you know what? When you start, they don't know any better, so they won't, they won't mind that. You know, so what if it's not the best looking bow? For me, the big one is, I ordered a 30 pound bow. It wasn't 30, it was closer to 22 pounds or so. And that's just not acceptable. But if you're teaching people, 20 pounds is about right. So I'm wondering if the 20 pounds is even 20 pounds. So there is that question. Now the other one is, it's slow. And this baby doesn't shoot an arrow, sort of lobs it. I mean, I was barely hitting 120 and I was pulling. I was using back tension like I never did before. But that's how it is. And the final miss is the paradox. Bows without paradox are much harder to shoot than bows with. Now, when you're a beginner, it doesn't matter much. I understand that. On this bow, I was using 800 spined arrows and they were too stiff. They were actually hitting the riser and I was getting pink feathers. The quill of it stuck in the, the fiberglass riser or the resin riser, whatever you want to call it. So I'd have to use at least a thousand spined arrows. You know, and that's the problem. Now, if it was cut past center, you know, maybe I wouldn't have that problem, but that's about it. So there's my four misses. It's but ugly. I got not what I ordered. I wanted 30 pounds. I got 20 something. It's pretty slow and it has that paradox. You know what? And that's the hits and misses. Now I'm going to wrap it all up and give you my honest opinion of this bow. All right, everybody, final opinions. I know it's cheap and yeah, it's a piece of junk, but it's a piece of junk with a purpose. You know what? You're going to go out and teach classes. This is the perfect bow. You don't have to go out and have one left-handed bow for every 10, and you don't know how many lefties you need. Buy a bunch of these, and there you go. You can get the people started. It's a fantastic bow for that. It's low cost, it's ambidextrous, and it's durable. They can dry fire the snot out of it. it ain't going to hurt it. And it is consistent. If you do everything right, you will hit where you want. So it's a beautiful starter bow for teaching. I think it is awesome on that. But what if you're, you know, you're not a beginner? Well, would I take this target shooting? <laughs> nope. Would I take it 3D shooting? Nope. What I would use it for is blank bail practicing, working form. It's nice, smooth, it's easy. You don't have to sit there and think about things. You can just relax and pay attention to what's going on. And that is what I really love about it. So for $35 plus whatever it is, 40 something dollars total. You know what? This is the perfect bow for teaching. Get people started in archery. You couldn't care less about it. If it breaks, you go away, throw it, but you can help people. All right, boys and girls, that's it. There it is. Cheap bow on eBay, $40. It is what it is, but I had a good time shooting and I had a lot of fun. And I think if you're going to be teaching, I think this is a bow. You should take a look at it. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time with an all new episode, 3D Archery.